Well, hey, folks, the day has dawned where DeGrau is finished. Eddie has become DeGrau. <laughs> <laughs> After days of hard research, to truly understand the legend, you have to live it. You have to become the legend. You have to become the legend. Hit the treasure. We, we, uh, Eddie grew a mustache. I grew a mustache. <laughs> I twirled it. I'm, I'm learning Spaniard language. Spanish, I believe, is what the language is called. It's Spanish. Okay, well, I mean, you know, I was like, is he Spaniard though? You know, the research says so many things. <sighs> no, um, we just wanted to do a little, a little after show to talk with you folks, um, about uh, about the series because it is done. It took a year longer than we thought it was going to. Yeah. Uh, we had hoped to have it all wrapped up in 2020, but you know, the world uh, went to heck. That's what it was. So it took two years. Um, but we 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 wanted to talk a little bit about how we started planning it how it ended up and um, just talk with you folks for a little bit. I hope everybody enjoyed it. There's not very many people here watching right now because I, I think that there's a lot of people still watching the premiere, people who didn't make it on time. Um, but we had a blast making it. Yeah, it, it was the coolest thing I think we've done so far. Oh yeah, easily, in my opinion at least. If you guys are just rolling in late too, you could go back to the beginning. Yeah, you can start, you can watch it from the beginning now. And you can watch this live stream after. You know, this will be up after the show. Um, but, and yes, uh, Morph asks, what adventure is next? We have another adventure in the works, which we'll talk about a little bit at the end. So thanks, everybody, for joining. Uh, we just wanted to give a little backstory on the whole Vault of DeGrau. Uh, and for people who are watching this at a later time, there's a live chat that we're staring at. So if there's long periods of time with us not talking, it's because we're reading all of the very kind comments and all of messages from my friends. Uh, congratulating us on it being done, finally. So Two when we, long years. yeah, when we first started it, it was legitimately, Eddie was like, we should look for this treasure. And I was like, all right, well, if we're going to look for it, we sh we've got to, like, make a thing out of it, right? And once we decided we were going to film, like, a bunch of episodes into, like, a series, we had originally wanted to do, like, 10 or 12 episodes, um, but it got to a point towards the end where, like, we need to kind of wrap this up or we're never going to finish it. So it wound up being eight. There's just too much information around it, really. Right. And in the... I... I, like I've said, I'm the skeptic and I was 99.9999% sure we were just, we weren't going to find it. <laughs> so my biggest thing was, all right, we have to end the show and without doing what some other treasure hunting shows do where they go for 10, 11, 12 seasons without actually finding anything. I'm like, I want to have an ending to this. And aside from actually finding the treasure, how do we end this on like a satisfying note? Yeah. And so before we even filmed episode one, we decided we were going to hide our own. No matter treasure. what. No matter what. Well, unless we found the grouse treasure. And well, then... we'd still hide something, but you know, it'd just be easier. Be right. We wouldn't have to go and make all the silver for us and stuff. <laughs> so... Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that too. So, uh, so we knew from the very beginning we were going to hide the treasure, and we 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 knew from the very beginning that we were going to do, do some investigating in Wallingford and Hell's Half Acre, or excuse me, Chaos Canyon and Bristol and Hell's Half Acre. Um, we didn't know anything about Camel's Hump until. Like, a month ago <laughs> yeah or two months it ago, was maybe. like maybe a week or two before we even shot the episode right. actually it was like pretty quick progression and we knew from the beginning we wanted to delve into the techniques 
that others used, we knew we had to have a dowsing episode. Oh, yeah. That was a big theme we wanted to do, following up the footsteps of those came before us. Yeah. And, and we actually it was really cool. were trying to find people to, like, meet in person to, like, teach us how to douse. But, you know, with COVID and people's <laughs> reluctance to actually be on film teaching us something like that, uh, we ended up doing it through... Um, through uh, Zoom or Skype or whatever. And we knew we wanted to have a psychic episode and a supernatural episode. And we were really hoping something supernatural would Oh, happen. I had so much bigger plans. And the I coyotes almost... were like a very, you know, that was a, a nice surprise for the coyotes to happen. But we were also really kind of hoping for like... I was looking to bag a demon dog, man. I, was, I had high hopes for that episode, but... Yeah. Uh... So those are the two. Maybe next legend will <laughs> take out some creepy ghosts or something. We knew that those two episodes were definitely going to happen. Um, and But then the rest were, were very natural. Um, the first, we wanted to just kind of explain what the legend was. And we knew that was going to take a long time. And then the second episode, we, we didn't know anything about mining, especially in Vermont. So we had to go see one for ourselves so that we knew what to look for out there in the mountains. Um, and then it was really just trying to debunk the myth at these different locations. Um, once we were done with Wallingford, we decided that there was like no chance of anything being there. We, we were trying to find an inn into Bristol and it's all, all like the, almost all of the land along the road is private land. And we're like, how are we going to get up there? Mm -hmm. And I just like sent out a message on the Bristol Historical Society Facebook page. And I was like, hey, does anybody know how to get up there? And like- And that's gotta be a frequent question. I mean, this is- Maybe. This was a big, well, it was a big thing. Yeah. People were up there like crazy looking for stuff. And somehow we, somebody's like, oh, you need to talk to Ted, Ted Lilas. And so I reached out to Ted and not only his like the greatest guy, yeah. but he owned the land for like 20 years. Yeah. And he knew the legend. He knew everything about it. It was oh, like yeah. he such said, a crazy coincidence. He said back when he owned the land, there was still people sneaking up there on the yeah. weekends. He right. said people with flashlights digging stuff up. He said it was crazy. He actually said it was kind of funny owning it. Yeah. He says one weekend, you know, there'd be like a pile of stones from old excavations and stuff there, yeah. right? You know, someone would get up like, oh. Take the rocks here, pick up the whole pile, move it over here, and then the next week it's it's a pile of stones. It's probably in the stone. <laughs> he says stuff like that. It just happened, and it's just it's like sounds like a cartoon almost. Yeah. But you know, he he lived there, he owned it, and he was dealing with that. Yeah, for you know years. Yeah, and <laughs> all of that frenzy was because of that one money diggers book written by Harvey. Um, and over when was it? It was, I think it was like in the springtime. It was, it was a while ago. I discovered May Martin and I was crushed. I was like, God, what are we going to do now? The whole thing was like based on a fictional novel. Like so many things out of Harvey's book came straight out of the May Martin novel. I wasn't so sure right away. Yeah. Every time, you know, it's like it keeps going further up. It keeps going further up, you know. Like the, I was waiting for the book was based off of this. Well, yeah, um, but I, I was I, that's what I was doing too, and I tried to find different um, variations of the of the May Martin. And then I finally found one with a forward of the author where he explained the camel's hump thing, um, which I think now we've decided now is probably not true either. You know, he was a fiction writer, and um, he was. He wasn't in the same town, but he was one town over. He could see Camel's Hump from his home. He no doubt read that same newspaper article that we read at the end of this last episode, and um, and it's a great it's a great basis for a story, you know. Yeah. Um, it is. Yeah, and it was very it was very kind of natural these last few episodes where the we didn't have any of that planned at the beginning. You know, we were kind of like researching it real time as the videos were happening and we were kind of making these re re revelations as we went. 
um, until the very end when we decided it seems like the whole thing's not real. Disappointing, but also it, now we have the chance to put our own legend. The legend of their silver being silver in the mountains is still true, yeah. even though we debunked it. Um, so, <laughs> the melting of the silver. <laughs> Um, so I, I got a whole bunch of silver bullion, 999 silver. Actually, Eddie and I kept our own bars, the one ounce bars. And my plan, <laughs> my plan was to have four ounce bars. It's roughly $24, $25 an ounce. You have $100 bars. Right? I wasn't thinking a particular weight. Yeah. I guess I was thinking more like what the... You would imagine bars like this big, like right? Like ingot, you know? Like, 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 yeah. So just listen to me. You know, okay? Like a brick, you know? Like, like this. I was like, I YouTube. You know, it's what everybody does now, right? You go on YouTube. How to melt silver. You can melt silver with a, with a map gas torch. Right. Okay. I bought a nice map gas torch, bought a couple canisters, map gas. I took four ounce coins, not, not coins, you know, the boolean, put them in a crucible, and I put that torch on them, and they didn't do a thing. Most unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> they, I didn't get them hot enough. And I was like, well, I really don't want to buy like a forge. Um, so I ended up doing one ounce bars. But at, it turns out melting one ounce of silver and pouring it successfully pouring it into a wooden mold is what i use is really hard like it's i could not it was it took so long <laughs> uh but but they're here they're done they're done and more importantly they're out there so right i think it's still pretty cool and the prison. I shouldn't say that. Okay. Just imagine opening a something with a, a lot of silver. It's a chest. We showed a picture. Okay. We're trying to be as okay, secret yeah, as yeah, possible I, about <laughs> the treasure itself. But it exists. It's in the mountains of Vermont. And um, it's a chest. Treasure full of chest. Silver. Glistening as it opens in the sun rays. And, oh, and I will say, too. Be a, hum when you open it. <laughs> There's actually two chests. We had two chests um, in the same place. And the first person who finds it Obviously. take the chest with the silver. And the second chest is to be left there for subsequent finders. Right. And um, the way we made it is well, we're not going to explain what happens, but uh, the every person who finds it after the first person something will get something. Um, and you guys should definitely a thousand percent record. If you're yes. out looking for it, you think you're you're hot on the trail, please record it, even if it's just cell phone video, you know, must be preferably, you know, but it'd be so <laughs> cool. And with your permission, of course, yes, it'd be cool if we put out something, the please. live reaction of you and maybe talk to you about it, you know, that'd be so cool. If you go out looking for the treasure, even if you don't find it, record yourself and either post it on your own channel and let us know that it, that you did that or send us the footage and we'll post it. Um, we would love for this to become, you know, a, a continuation of a new legend, you know? Um, my biggest fear is somebody is going to wake up in the morning and go find it tomorrow. <laughs> and it'll be over very soon. It's been an emotional roller coaster, really. There's been yeah. times like, man, maybe no one's gonna find it. It's just gonna be here for years. <laughs> yeah. Or like um, and also we know that there's going to be people who just think that we didn't hide anything. You know, they're like, oh, it'd be so easy to just say we hid a treasure somewhere out there. That's um, fair. That's a natural. So if some, so if you go looking for it, please moment. The person who does eventually find it, we would love to have that footage of you finding it. Um, Robert Ferguson sent a two dollar super chat. Thanks, Robert. Thank you. We'll put it in the next chest. Yeah. 
<laughs> um, so, yes, and the, and the only thing we'll say about how you are able to locate the treasure is that all of the information you need to find it is hidden within the eight episodes of the series. That's exactly what I said in eight, episode eight. That's what you need to know. You have all it. the tools. Right. We were going to keep this live, this after show very short, um, but we did also want to mention that we were working on season two. But it's not really season two of DeGrow. DeGrow's done. Man, this is a whole nother animal. This is, yes, it's going to be different. It's going to be very different. Wow. It's going to be so different. Eddie and I, as we were discussing it, we were worried. We were we were discussing whether we should make just a whole new channel for it. It's it's a whole new beast. It's, it's a whole it's a whole, whole new, new flavor. It's a whole new you know like you know I, I just feel like we're, we're already like <sighs> yes much like this one much like to grow. I feel like it's way over our heads. Yeah, but we're going to do our best and uh, haven't even filmed a lick of it. No. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be, we should just say right now, National Geographic Channel tra tra Travel Channel. We're not interested. Discovery, <laughs> sorry. You know, it, it, it's got to be our own thing. It's going to be our own thing. It's going to, it's going to take a while to make. Oh, yeah. um, and we're not going to release it in installments. We're just going yeah, to. Yeah, it's going to be rapid uh, fire. Yeah. I mean, like weekly, weekly. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna film it all. First. This is a Netflix bingeable, but it's gonna be—it's right. the weekly, like you know, Disney Plus bingeable. Anyway, we hope everybody enjoyed it. Oh, I was gonna say that I haven't really been able to like think about anything else other than kind of planning our next moves and thinking about, you know, like that last episode. A lot of planning went into that. Like, all right, we're gonna want to film on the shore of Lake Champlain. We want to hike up Camel's Hump. Oh, here's a funny story: Camel's Hump. We're like, oh, it's going to be great. We're going to. So here in Vermont, the days are very short now this time of year. And we're like, all right, we'll leave first thing in the morning. We'll go to Lake Champlain. We'll film a little thing there. We're going to go to Camel's Hump. We're going to hike to the top of Camel's Hump. We looked it up. It was like, what, two miles or something? We're yeah, like, that's what it says. Two miles. Like, oh, we're like, we could do it in like less than an hour. Yeah. I mean, that's that's nothing. Easy peasy. We'll film something at the top. We'll hike back down below the head search legitimately search and then um you know wrap it up and, and it took so long to get to the top <laughs> oh every time goodness. we walk past people coming down because it's a it's a public trail yeah we're like are we close and they're like oh you got maybe another hour another 40 minutes really <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah and also it's a public trail there were school buses of people. <laughs> oh, I know. We were, we were driving up a lot. Well, what's it going to be like? I'm like, I bet it'll be dead. No one's up there. It's a little chilly. No one wants to be up there. It's like two school buses side by side. We walked past so many people. Full parking lot. But once we got to the top, there was nobody there. And we're like, brilliant. Yeah. We'll send up the drone. You couldn't tell because we didn't do any filming at the top. It was like 400 mile an hour winds. <laughs> we almost lost the drone, man. I was like out there. <laughs> <laughs> we, we we tried to record ourselves talking up there too but just the wind just yeah and really then we came nuts. down because we didn't know and we came down a little bit and i reviewed the footage i was like we gotta film all that again because we can't hear ourselves mind you it was freezing up here okay we were at the car i'm like you know it's pretty warm i'm gonna leave this extra layer down here you know yeah just bring this little sweater in <laughs> was, uh... and we did wind up walking out maybe an hour and a half maybe an hour and a half in pitch black. Mm. And this guy over here had like a $400 flashlight. Oh, it's not that he much. He couldn't it's... even get it working. I fixed it, okay? <laughs> there was some loose stuff going on. It... All right. But yeah, there, there was problems. But anyway, we made it happen. Now that it's done, I can really start thinking about the next one. Um, the next one is based on, we're not going to talk about much of it at all, but it's based on a much more recent um treasure myth it's treasure that's buried mm -hmm. um, our specialty 
<laughs> oh, for one. <laughs> um, and uh, it's it's a bit more recent. Buried treasure. There's there's some crime involved. There's some. It has a little. It's very different, right? And we will different not be flavor. We will not be burying a treasure at the end of this episode. This is beef ramen and chicken ramen. Two different flavors. Two different flavors. Okay. Different. You know what? What? It it's more like a pork chop and chicken ramen. I I think apples and oranges is it's a whole different common thing. um Yeah. <laughs> it's a whole yeah. different macronutrient, not even flavor. That's right. just it's gonna be groundbreaking. I'm really excited. Honestly, going into the last episode was such a relief because we've been brainstorming on and off and trying to like contain ourselves. Like, nah, no, no, we need to finish the graph. We, we can't keep thinking of these ideas. We need to go, we need to go, you know, and search this last spot, do these, you know. Yes. We need to finish this thing. <laughs> Over last winter, it was like so it was really it was really depressing for me being like, we haven't done a new one since it was like like October and then it was like February March and I was like oh, we're never gonna finish this like we need to finish this um and we did here we are yeah, yeah. two years later but we did yeah. but I mean like you know we were already talking about like you know how much fun we've been having along the way how awesome it was to make it we need to make another and like yeah it's just and not get carried away until we're through with the grouts. We have to keep, you know, keep focus and yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I enjoy making metal detecting videos. I've been doing it for like four or five years now. And the videos are all very, very similar. Things I find are different, but the videos themselves pretty much the same every week. And to be able to do something like this, it's so different. It's so fun. You get to sit down and like plan things out. With like metal detecting videos, you don't, there's really no planning involved. Yeah. You go and, you know, you have no idea what you're going to find. Um, but with this, you get to sit down and do the research about, you know, try to try to do the things that people in the past did too. And it was fun. And I'm excited to do another one. Yeah. Similar, but different. It's got um, too much soul. AJ said, did you do any other searches regarding Captain Kidd? We, we, I did. Yeah. So here's, so when we were thinking about the next one, so we were, we were like still doing the growl and we're like, what's the next one? We were like going over all of the things uh, that we could do for the next one. And one of them was this dude in, I forget where he was, like Whitingham or Wall, uh, Wilmington, Vermont, who had a journal. He made a journal in like the 1700s of just all of the mentions he ever heard of, all of these different treasures. So-and-so dreamt of treasure in wherever. And so-and-so. An awesome guy for keeping yeah. record of that too, by the way. And it's a huge journal full of all of these mentions. So-and-so. So one of them... Uh, he talked a little bit about Captain Kidd, and we did some of our own research, like, hey, maybe we can look for Captain Kidd's treasure, who's like an actual guy, and he actually had treasure, and people actually found it. And he was like a he was like a big deal during that time. The end of the 1600s is when he was finally caught. He was a pirate. And, uh, he was hanged, I believe. Um, and like everybody was looking for a piece of Kidd's treasure. As far as Vermont, probably further west, I mean, there's no evidence that he ever made it out this far. Um, but I did say that, well, I think it was probably you, AJ, who, who had said that there's a place in Maine where it was a big deal. People were looking for his treasure. Um, but the problem with it was it's all like on the, like on the, along the ocean. And if yeah. we wanted to do any filming or anything there, we would have to drive like four or five hours. to. We were looking places. into it though. And yeah. one of it was legit. Like they did find one of his treasures on Long Island. Yeah. It's yeah. just too far for us. I mean, there's tons of treasure myths all over the United States, all over the world that we would love to research, but we've kind of, we got to keep it within a radius of like oh. a three hour drive. Well, yeah. Way. I mean, just doing DeGrau, which is only in Vermont. Yes. We had enough scheduling problems just getting a day to do one of those. So, yeah, you know, it's hard. 
is the banana. Um, so anyway, so we did look into a uh, kid, but it's just too far away. And a lot of the tales, we were like, all right, this dude made, made a journal of all of these treasures. Like we should just do a series. Every episode is just one of his journal entries and we just look into it. But as we did look into it, like a lot of them were just like, Mrs. Jones dreamt of treasure in, <laughs> yeah, in Woodford, Vermont. It's so like, and so lost his shoe next to mine. <laughs> yeah, they were they were weren't very researchable. Yeah. Um, so that would be cool though. We were talking about calling it the image. Yeah. That would have been cool. We really got ahead of ourselves with all of the you know, <laughs> there was no nothing to base off any of our I ideas know. from. But, but it, it would have been a really cool idea though. Yeah. And we're like there's like a hundred entries. It could, go on it could be like an episode, a tale, you know, like, right. um, um, there was also like an entry in that same journal that was like the best way to hide treasure. And it had to do with like burning blood with like special. Yeah. It's and like stuff. black magic yeah. stuff and sigils weird, written in there. Weird dude. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so the one that we did finally land on, um, was, uh, was fairly recent. Some of the newspaper articles were, uh in the 1900s so it seems more probable than like a random 1700s stranger coming to a town it's, you know hearsay like de Grau was uh when knight asks are you related to may martin well may martin is a fictional character so no um but that was just a very strange coincidence yeah, yeah it was. and it was funny how that came across because we we came to a point in the DeGrau tale where we spoke to Melanie, our psychic, and then we went looking and then we didn't find anything. And we were like, all right, what now? Like, where do we go from here? And it was a long, I think I put like two weeks later in the video, but it was a bit longer than that. And I just like went on newspapers.com, which is like a big collection of old newspapers or modern newspapers too, but. And I just typed in like Vermont newspapers, treasure, Spaniard, you know, uh, buried silver, blah, blah, blah. And I came across Maymar and in the newspapers, I think I mentioned this in the video, but in like 1835, it was in like all over the newspapers around here. Um, they published like fragments of the book on like a whole page of a newspaper every Sunday until the book was done. And it was like so popular. Everybody knew that story. Uh, in Vermont and probably elsewhere, there were stories about the um, the author getting upset because people were making the book, you know, illegally. You know, he had publishing rights to it, and everybody was just making it as far away as in England. People were making the book and selling it, and he wasn't getting any money for it, and it was a big deal. But it was so popular, everybody knew it. It makes sense that that would then turn into a legend because nobody's heard of that book now. Yeah. You know, yeah. we anyway. didn't even for like the. You know, no. half of this, like basically all of the series, really. Yeah. It was right up to the last episode. And as I was reading it, I was like, wow, this is very similar. And then it got to the guy and it was like, Mr. Gao. And I was like, oh no, this is it. This is where it came from. Yeah. But anyway, uh, Tony says, did you really see a light that pointed you to the cave? We definitely saw light. I'm sure it was a hunter. I mean, what else could it be? But we were we were way up. We were way up. And can I just say, we were hoping something supernatural would happen. But, yeah. the, but the coyotes at that moment, we didn't hear coyotes yeah. at all until we saw the light. We started talking and filming, and then the coyotes started howling. We we're like. I hope people are cranking the volume and really listening because it, it was loud. It was, it was like right loud. there. There was a big valley and a river there and right across that river, like I would wager that's where they were. It was perfect. Yeah. It was so perfect. <laughs> it was. Yeah, it was. Oh, uh, man. I don't know. I think the light maybe could be the uh, glow of a hellhound's eyes or the or a glowing hot iron of a... Well, we know now the myth isn't real, so probably not. <laughs> <laughs> just you know hounds hang out places sometimes and, you know, yeah i'm sure 
Um, no, I think that without without sounding uh, self absorbed, that's the right word. I feel like we made something kind of special with the series of DeGrau and the continuation of the very famous Vermont legend of treasure being in the mountains. We debunked it and then made it real again. And I'm glad everybody uh, has been enjoying it for two years. Yeah. And uh, we beg the person who finds it or all of you who look for it to please film yourself in landscape mode yeah. this way uh, and either post it on YouTube or send it to us. If you'd love to. That would be awesome. I mean, follow up. Rough draft, but yeah, we'd like to maybe have a conversation and oh, you know, be great some too. kind of posting. You know, I think that'd be really cool, right? And um, and don't be discouraged when you see someone found it. There's uh, there's still going to be something good for follow up finders, right? We'll, we'll repeat still that. Still go. There's two chests. The person who finds it first takes the good chest, well, the chest with all of the fortune in it, uh, and the second chest has stuff for you know following finders. So uh, even if it has been found, you can still find it. You can still go and get something for your trouble. Yeah. Um, yeah. When says two years. Yeah, it was. A I long know. Time. Not proud of it. Not proud of it. We promised the next one. It's going to be in sequential order. But, you know, every Friday for however many episodes we do. We haven't made it that far yet, but it's going to be exciting, I think. I'm already excited. All right, folks. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed. Yes. Um, thank you for watching the whole series. Thank you for watching us. Um, yes. And here's your tonight. here's your formal disclaimer. Uh, please don't hurt yourself looking for the treasure. We will not be held responsible. <laughs> yes. Be safe. Be smart. No trespassing, walking off cliffs. Right. Uh, demon dog hunting, anything wild. <laughs> no uh yeah stay uh stay off private land and don't fall off the cliff have a, have a great night everybody have a uh, wonderful holiday season and we'll um we'll see you in two well see you next week for a vlog and see you in two weeks for the bloopers the bloopers 21 usually every year the bloopers is my favorite but i think the grout is taking take this year bloopers are still going to be great though very good all right uh good night stay classic <laughs>